So it looks like Intel is making yet another graphics card. They recently started developing these ARC discrete graphics cards, which were previously called DG2, and are expected to arrive under the code name Alchemist in Q1 2022, which is right around the corner. Now, this is supposed to be something that'll be available in both desktops and laptops. Of course, I would expect the desktop model to be more powerful and the laptop model to be less powerful, but more power efficient, just like Nvidia and AMD do with their desktop and mobile cards. Now, this is not the first dedicated uh, graphics card that Intel has manufactured and released. In fact, this is the second generation uh, of their discrete graphics, DG1, AKA the Intel Iris XE that you see right here. This was the first one. Now, DG1 was more targeted at workstation PCs, pretty much for workloads that required something more powerful than what you might get with integrated graphics in a CPU, but not as powerful or expensive as a full-on gaming graphics cards, or certainly not as expensive as a Quadro. Uh, this DG1, is better suited for things like photo upscaling, uh, light video editing. Um, it's pretty much comparable to something like NVIDIA's GT130, uh, but it's even less capable for gaming. You can see that there is um, you know, still a pretty big difference between the highs and lows of this DG1 and the uh, GT1030. I also think that a card like this would work really great uh, maybe in a higher end media server because it's capable of uh, doing 8K content playback, not gaming, of course, um, just, you know, a movie or something like that. And it can drive up to three monitors at 4K at the same time. And the fanless design of this also ensures that you won't be disturbed during your content consumption. Uh, now, as far as things stand now, of course, NVIDIA and AMD they pretty much have a duopoly on the graphics card market, uh, at least when it comes to desktops and laptops. Uh, they're pretty much the only players in that range. Uh, and the business of manufacturing these kinds of chips, it's a really expensive one. It would pretty much be impossible for some new unknown company to come in and try and compete with them. But luckily, Intel is not new to chip manufacturing uh, and they are definitely not unknown. And they are, of course, still heavily involved in the PC industry. Every single desktop and laptop needs to have a CPU. Uh, in fact, dedicated graphics cards aren't even necessary for most people. If you just browse the internet, watch YouTube videos, social media, or even do some casual retro gaming, then chances are you can do that perfectly fine on integrated graphics, which Intel has been doing for years. Um, but AMD, they have been very disruptive in this industry, in this uh, PC industry the past few years. Since AMD manufactures both graphics cards and CPUs, they've had to compete with two giants, Intel dominating the CPU industry and Nvidia dominating the GPU industry. But AMD has all but completely dominated Intel in the past few years on both the gaming front and on the high-end workstation front, Intel still doesn't really have an answer for Threadrippers. Uh, and when it comes to the last generation of graphics cards, AMD really gave NVIDIA a run for their money, and usually they still win on price to performance, although the prices of GPUs have been much higher due to the low supply, which is probably the biggest reason that I'm really happy about Intel's efforts. I'm sure on their end, it's really just to try and remain relevant and be able to compete more with AMD. But this could end up being really good for people who just need graphics cards at a reasonable price. Because like I said, there has been a shortage and there's also an increase in demand. You know, there's all kinds of reasons for this from the TSMC chip shortage to the pandemic and I guess people staying at home gaming uh, to the crypto bull run. Uh, but one of the biggest reasons is just the fact that many people are, or not many people rather, are involved in the production of these chips um, for these graphics cards. So Intel's involvement, assuming that these cards are actually good, could really help out with that. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, are these cards actually going to be good? Um, and there's not really any benchmarks that we've really gotten from Intel. We've got uh, these gaming videos from Intel, which I guess are supposedly 
uh, using the DG2 card, but we don't really know about the full specifications of the system. Uh, and you should probably know by now that manufacturers, when it comes to these uh, videos, they tend to either doctor them a bit or they just take the uh, best case scenarios of the footage. Um, we do have some leaked specifications though. So these are the leaked specs of the different uh, SKUs from the DG2. So we can see that this one here, SKU1, uh, is pretty much supposed to be the most high-end model. Now we could go ahead and try to compare this to something like AMD's 6800 XT. Uh, I'm sure that the gaming performance of the DG2 or ARC is going to be much weaker, uh, especially since it's just their second generation and really their first attempt at making like a real gaming graphics card. Uh, but it's it's really hard to do a specification or I guess um, comparison of the specifications because the design of this card is just so different and the terminologies are very different. But we can see that uh, from this flagship card, there are some similarities. So uh, when it comes to the memory type, we're looking at GDDR6. We're actually looking at that for the entire lineup. And that is the same as the latest cards from AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, when it comes to the max memory, 16 gigabytes, so that's going to be the same as something like a 6800 XT. Um, of course, the clock speeds are a lot lower, uh, but even Intel is not able to break the laws of physics. Obviously, they're not going to be able to build this in a fanless design and get clock speeds as high as an 6800 XT, which has several fans on it, uh, that just isn't going to work or else it would melt your graphics card and your PC. But there's also a lot of really cool technology that Intel is promising uh, will make it into these chips, things like mesh shading, variable rate shading, video upscaling, and real-time ray tracing. They're also promising AI accelerated super sampling, which sounds a whole lot like NVIDIA's deep learning super sampling or DLSS. And hopefully if they do have something like that to try and compete with NVIDIA, it's a bit more thought out, like a bit more developed than AMD's version of that, which is called the Fidelity FX uh, Super Resolution, which only uses a spatial upscaling technique instead of the AI-based uh, temporal upscaling. So really big promises that are coming from Intel with a due date right around the corner. Um, again, this doesn't really mean a whole lot coming from a company like Intel, but there's a few other things that I would still want to know about this card to uh, I guess get a more accurate gauge of how great I think it's going to be. Uh, of course, third-party benchmarks are something I'd like to see. I don't want to see some sort of you know doctored gaming footage. Uh, but what is the driver situation going to be like? Will Intel release open source drivers for it on Linux? Because day by day, Linux gaming becomes more and more viable. Uh, the Steam Deck will probably be a major step forward for Linux gaming, which is coming out uh, basically just around the same time as this. Uh, I know with DG1, we did get some patches into the Linux kernel for it back in April, which was a little while after DG1's release, but hopefully DG2 sees faster open source driver development. Also, will Intel place mining blocks or will they somehow nerf this technology uh, to prevent it from being used to mine cryptocurrencies? So. In case you don't have much knowledge about this, many different types of cryptos can be mined with GPUs, uh, probably most notably Ethereum, which is the second biggest cryptocurrency. And usually what people are mining, at least when you see those giant uh, racks with dozens of graphics cards in them. Now for crypto miners, they're generally just looking at the hash rate of the card, as well as how much electricity the card consumes to produce that hash rate. And if all of those calculations add up to a profit, then they will order as many cards as profitable because they can run multiple cards at once inside of a board to do their mining. Uh, it's not really like gaming where uh, you don't get much really good performance these days from doing uh, SLI or using multiple cards to play a game. Now, Ethereum is supposed to become full on proof of stake next year as well, which means graphics cards won't be used to mine it anymore. And this will probably help a lot with the GPU shortages, but there are still 
many other cryptocurrencies that are profitable to mine with graphics cards. And if any of them become as popular as Ethereum, they could cause the same kinds of shortages. Uh, but as with any new hardware or software, we'll have to wait until it ships to see how good it really is. But since this is still a very new space for Intel and their recent past hasn't really contained a whole lot of innovations, I really doubt that it's going to be as great as some people are hyping this product up to be, but let's hope that I'm wrong. Let's hope it actually is really awesome.